Hello and welcome to the Wicca Library. My name is Aaliyah, so happy to have you here. Today I got a haircut because it's spring and every time spring comes around uh, or summer I want to chop off all of my hair all of the time. So I did it and I'm very happy I did because it is going to be my first summer in New York very soon and the humidity is going to kick my ass and I'm not, I'm excited about it, but I'm not excited about that aspect. But because it is spring, it officially marks three months that have happened this year, January, February, and March. But I wanted to wrap up all of my reading I've done so far in 2024 just because I've read a fair amount of books and I have thoughts on them, I have stats on them, I use both Storygraph and a reading journal of my own, which I have here today. So yeah, I'm just going to go over the months with you all. I'm not going to wrap up every single book I read because not all of them need to be mentioned, not all of them were too memorable, but I want to talk about the highs and lows of 2024 so far. Starting off with some very quick story graph stats for the nerds who are watching. Uh, not me, I could, I could never be a nerd who enjoys statistics, but I have read 28 books thus far this year, and I have read a lot of moods according to story graph. I have mainly read books that seem emotional, adventurous, and reflective, which is pretty on par with me. I haven't read that many crazy emotional books, like I haven't cried. Actually, that's a lie. I have read a few books this year that have made me cry, but I've read less sad books than I tend to to usually read. I think I've read as many lighthearted books as I've read sad books, and I've read mysterious books, inspiring books, tense books. So I've read everything under the sun, it sounds like. But as per usual, my reading pace that I tend to pick up is medium paced and fast paced. I haven't read many slow paced books this year. I just, I always, I enjoy a shorter, faster paced book in regards to a long, slow-paced book, but I do still have an appreciation for slower-paced books. One book that has been marked as slow-paced is Don't Go Without Me by Rosemary Valero O'Connell, which I gave five stars. It was, I think, the first book I read this year, and I absolutely loved it. I don't even know if I'd call it slow-paced. Actually, I would, but I loved it, so, you know, that doesn't signify me loving or hating a book. But as for how long books have been, I have been reading mostly books that are less than 300 pages, 48% sounds about right, and then the next section is 300 to 499 pages, 43%. So I am reading some longer books, and I will say that is because I've been reading more graphic novels, and some graphic novels tend to be very big and chunky, such as the 500 plus page um, bind-ups of The Girl from the Other Side that I've been picking up and absolutely loving this year. Those are 500 plus page books, but they're all pictures, so, you know, don't think I'm really reading just tomes of books because those tend to not be my style. As for audiobook lengths, I've been reading a lot of audiobooks this year, and the majority of them, yet again, tend to be less than eight hours long, but there is still a significant section that is between eight and 16 hours, and then some longer audiobooks as well. I tend to listen to audiobooks on 1.25 to 2 times speed. It really depends on the narrator and the story. Like, I recently finished The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, which I absolutely adored, and Toni Morrison narrated it, and her voice is so wonderful, and the story is a lot more dense and slow, and I didn't want to miss too much of it, so I read it on 1.35 times speed, but there are other books I've read this year that I was like, two times speed, picking up everything. I reread There There by Tommy Orange, and because it was a reread, I was able to reread it on audiobook faster. So in case you've ever wondered how I read my audiobooks, that is how. As for the fiction to nonfiction 
pie chart, we have majority fiction. I've read a few, as in I think one nonfiction this year, and it was the graphic memoir, uh, Fun Home by Alison Bechdel. I thought it was fine. I know it is a bit of a cult classic. People really love it. I thought it offered a lot. I think it was interesting to talk about, but it wasn't my type of memoir. I just, it was very heavy in the literary references and I just didn't get those, but you know, that's fine. One of my favorite parts of Storygraph is the genre breakdown because it really shows how many fucking genres <laughs> I will read and that really means every genre. So I have mainly been reading fantasy this year, which is quite the switch up. I haven't read fantasy in a while, but this is the year I've been reading more of it. I've mainly been reading a lot of graphic novels that are fantasy, and I've also been, I don't know, getting into more middle grade fantasy, and it's just been a fun time, and I'm really excited that I'm getting back into that genre. Of course, the second longest is LGBTQ fiction, and that stat might actually be a little incorrect. It's probably less than it is because a fair amount of the books I read are queer to some level, but won't be logged as that for any other reason. Then we have literary, graphic novel, short stories, romance, historical, contemporary, and then it gets into a f fewer books, uh, fewer genres. But as for my tags, this I've been reading a fair amount from my own shelf. Still not the majority of the books, but I've been reading more of them, and I think I'm on track to finish the 24 books that I set out at the beginning of this year to finish or unhaul, so that's, that's some good news. As for the wrap-up of formats I've been reading, 61% have been print and 25% have been audio, 14% have been digital. The majority of them have also been from the library. Uh, if I'm not reading owned books, I'm reading from the library. So, you know, that, that that's how it tends to go down. My most read authors so far this year have been Olivia Atwater, which I read two novellas from, and Nagabi, who I have read two bind-ups of The Girl from the Other Side series from. So that, that wasn't surprising to me. And yeah, I think the final stat I really want to focus on is my average star rating, which has been 3.89 stars. And it's actually probably a little lower because one of my least favorite books of this year, which was Lore of the Wilds, this one just really disappointed me. I have a whole reading vlog where I read it and talk about my thoughts in it, but I didn't rate it because I read an arc of it and I was, you know, hoping that it would be heavily edited before being out in the world, but from the sound of it and from some other reviewers who have been kind of making the same points I was, it wasn't. So. I still don't really want to give a star rating to it outside of my reading journal just because I know it's a debut book and I want to give it a chance and I think maybe it just wasn't my thing, but I really, really did not like that book. But I have had six five stars and six four stars and several books in between those, so I've been having a very good reading year so far. The rest, I have had a few 2.5, 2.75, a fair amount of threes, 3.75s, which I almost, three to four stars, I consider a win usually. When it gets to two star something, that's where I either regret my time reading it or I just don't care about that book anymore. But those are the stats. And so let's get into my reading journal and how I've been doing on reading goals so far this year. So at the beginning of the year, I started a reading journal and I have a little goals page here. And then this page, if you're curious, is just keeping on top of new releases that I'm excited about. But the goals I set out in 2024, as far as reading goes, is get physical DBR down to 10 books. I will tell you right now that that has not happened, but I also set out a goal to review all of my NetGalley arcs. As of this moment, I still have six or seven that I need to read and review 
although I'm almost done with one arc I have and I am planning a reading vlog eventually to really get on top of that goal so I'm not worried about not reading those books before the end of the year. But the next goal I had was to primarily buy from independent bookstores if I am buying books and I think I've stayed on top of that to the most part. My one caveat was I did go to the UK and I uh, got some books from Waterstones which is not an independent bookstore but the majority of my books have still been from a local bookstore that's close to me that is independent and yeah so I'm being pretty good about that one. The next goal I had was to get back into book binding this year. When I was in middle school, I had an obsession with book binding, basically like leather book binding. I was very into making journals and things like that. And this past year, I started getting back into it. I started wanting to rebind books that either I don't like the covers of or to make, you know, a special edition for a gift to a friend or something like that. And I had a lot of fun with that. Let's get into the actual books that I've been reading this year and some standouts, some favorites of each month and some least favorites of each month. Starting off with January, because of course, I read quite a few books and they are all here. They're very pretty in case you're curious about how my reading journal looks. This is how it is. I don't know if I'll do a tour. I've always played around with the idea of doing a tour and then I get bored of the video when I'm filming it. So that might never come out. But as for my favorite books of January, we have a few and in no particular order because I'm not deciding favorites of the year yet. That's that's future me's problem. But favorites are Don't Go Without Me by Rosemary Valero O'Connell, The Late Americans by Brandon Taylor, Crumbs by Danny Sterling, and What You Are Looking For is in the Library, which author I forgot and it's also translated, but I will, you know, keep all of the book information down in the description as per usual. Yeah, I read all of those books and I really enjoyed them. Least favorite, however, of January was definitely Lore of the Wilds. That book just, I felt like it was done dirty by an editor or by a team of editors. I just don't feel like it was supported. The idea was interesting and fair and there were some things, the pacing was just so horrendously fast and not and as you saw I enjoy a fast-paced story but this wasn't fast-paced it was quickened it was it was too fast to actually have any substance and the characters were weak and I don't want to go on a rant review because I've also already done kind of a rant vlog <laughs> so you can watch that if you're interested I read Feybound in it as well and I just read a bunch of fairy books in that vlog so it was a fun time save for Lore of the Wilds. Moving on to February, we read fewer books, but still some, some solid ratings. I decided that my favorites from this month were The Inheritance of Orchidia Divina by Zareda Cordova and The Girl from the Other Side, volumes one through three by Nagabi. And these two books, one of them is kind of a bind up, but the Inheritance of Orchidea Divina, I also have a vlog where I talk about, and I think I talk about both of those in a pour over books episode. If you're curious, you can check that out and see more of my thoughts there. But these two books were just so good and I really loved them and they might make it to my favorites of the year. Who, who's to say? Who's to say? But the least favorite book I read was unfortunately Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schweblin. This was a book I picked up a while ago on a classmate's recommendation and the stories, the short stories in it were just so utterly forgettable that I just can't even tell you anything about them. Nothing stuck. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't like an actual hatred, but sometimes I would rather hate a book and feel strongly about that than feel just so mediocre about it. And it took me a while to read, even though it's a short story collection, just because I kept forgetting I was reading it and I just did not care. So that was sad. 
Now, moving on to this past month, which was March, I read fewer books, but I did read some things that I enjoyed. My favorites, deciding now, because I didn't really think about this yet, but it definitely has to be There There by Tommy Orange, which I reread technically in preparation for Wandering Stars, which I will talk about later, but There There I really enjoyed, and yeah. That, that'll be a favorite. I also read the next few volumes of The Girl from the Other Side, which I loved. I didn't love them as much as the first collection, but I'm still absolutely loving that series. The next book that I really, really loved and gave five stars was The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I read this this month and I just absolutely loved it. It's going to be a favorite of this month and possibly a favorite of the year. I do plan to read more Morrison this year, so we will see. So those are my little wrap-ups for the months and oh! No, actually it's not, because I have to talk about my least favorite of March. And that was, sadly, Monstrilio. And I read this in a recent vlog, if you're curious. I read some booktuber favorites, and I read this on the recommendation of A Plant-Based Bride. I absolutely love her recommendations 99% of the time, and I love her videos and her content. Sadly, Monstrilio just did not hit for me. It was fairly disappointing. I ended up on a rating of 2.75 stars, which I feel was kind of generous for how I was feeling. The audiobook was narrated very well. I just felt so lackluster about every aspect of that book and I think a lot of the reason people love that book is because it hits them and because it resonates and emotionally impacts them and that just was not there for me. So it was unfortunate but it happens. <laughs> to wrap up this video I wanted to do a last now next for reads. So the last book I read was The Bead Workers and this was a short story collection by Beth Piatote and this was really good. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed a lot of the stories in it. I did kind of wish that they connected like the stories if they had overlapping characters or things like that but that is definitely just a personal thing. I love when short stories have something connecting them that's not just a theme or an idea. But yeah, The Beadworkers was very good. I do not regret my time reading that at all and I would highly recommend it as well. It just, it's a bunch of different short stories and just displaying indigenous life and families and friendships and yeah, it was really good. I really enjoyed that one. As for my current read, I'm currently reading Wandering Stars by Tommy Orange. This book I have been reading all month. I have been taking my time with it for sure. I was lucky enough to get the arc, but by the time I'm reading it, it is already out. So it is the follow-up to There There, which as I mentioned is one of my favorite books. I also love that Tommy Orange is a local author to me. I'm originally from Oakland, California, and he is also from Oakland, I believe, and his books are take place in Oakland and it is just absolutely wild and wonderful to read these stories of these characters living in places that I vividly know where it is. Like, it's not just, oh, that's the same city I live in, that's the same bus I've taken, that's the same street I've walked on, that's where I went to school, that's where things... It's just, it's it's a love letter to Oakland and Wandering Stars is very similar. I will say I'm enjoying the second half of this book much more than the first. Uh, it's just going quicker and I'm really loving the characters that we've returned to and yeah I'm I'm having a good time with that book. That book is phenomenal and I'm so ex I'm so happy it exists. I'm so happy that a second book has been written and published. As for what I want to read next, I've already kind of picked it up, but I want to read The Night is Short, Walk on Girl, and this one just has such a pretty cover and I own it so I will be able to actually 
get into it and check another book off of my 24 in 2024 reading list that I have. So yeah, I'm excited about that one. I've only gotten two or three chapters in, no, I think I've only gotten one chapter into it, but it's funny and it's light and I'm excited. So yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, comment if you've read any of these books, or if you made it to the end, feel free to just comment a red heart emoji. I don't know, something, something fun, something fun. Uh, technically, I'm going to be putting this up on Easter, so maybe if you celebrate Easter, happy Easter. <laughs> but yeah, those are my books for the first quarter of this year. Let me know how you liked this format of video and I'll consider doing one for the next quarter, which will be the halfway point of the year and we'll see what changes. So thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next video.